Hummingbird 360 Imaging. It's uh, compatible with uh, all cable drive Minn Kota motors, whether it's a Maxim, a Maxim Pro, Fortrex, uh, and now I guess the Altrex, which is kind of a hybrid between a cable drive and a power drive. Uh, but Altrex has a special bracket that allows us to mount 360 Imaging to it. So uh, we have a boat here with a Minn Kota Altrex. We're gonna go ahead and install this uh, Hummingbird 360 Imaging to it. Now that we got our 360 imaging unit out of the box, we can go through our parts. We have the actual transducer itself. We have our owner's manuals and operating manuals. Mounting hardware. An ethernet cord. A Hummingbird GPS precision antenna. A power cord. And a couple of mounting brackets. Now that we have all the parts uh, organized and sorted, we're going to go ahead and, and put the mounting hardware on the bottom of the trolling motor drive housing. This will only, uh, only fit one way, and uh, you can simply hold it up there and see how the holes align. So remember, we put the stabilizing arm on one side. We're going to use the bottom two holes on the other side for this bracket, and now there's also two holes on the top that we're going to use as well. So simply take the mounting hardware use the appropriate fasteners and just right now we're only going to hand tighten them. Although I had the wrench on it, there's still only hand tighten. There's still a little wobble and play in there and we'll, we'll tighten everything up once we get the actual transducer mounted. Right now I'm just starting the screws in this mounting bracket uh, and then we're going to thread the 360 imaging unit through our mounting hardware. But uh, you know, you can see it right in the owner's manual, it tells you how to do it. And, and it's a relatively new product, so don't be afraid to pick it up and, and just kind of thumb through the first pages and it'll tell you how to mount everything. Now that we've got our wires all, all on bunch, we're going to just feed it through the, the mounting hardware. And feed our transducer through our mounting equipment. One thing to note, and uh, we have this trolling motor, this Altrex, deployed quite a ways down in the water. But one thing you want to be very aware of is at least a minimum of one inch of space between the top of the prop and the bottom of the transducer. And that way, when you're steering the trolling motor, you won't hit the uh, transducer with the prop. Okay, I'm just going to kind of guess. The orientation of this, there's, there's two ends on this Hummingbird 360 unit. One of them is more of a sharper point. The other one is rounded. The rounded one is going to point in the direction of your traveler, basically in line with the center line of the keel. So I'm just going to kind of guess at that angle right there. I'm at least an inch above the top of the prop. Now I'm just going to go ahead and snug these up. Now our next step is we're going to actually deploy this in, in like we would on the water and see um, if that rounded part actually is in line with our direction of travel. Okay, so now we, we have the motor deployed as it were in the water. I don't want to lock it down because of the trailer and the tongue of the trailer and everything is, is kind of in our way. So I'm just going to put a block of wood here. And that's going to get us close enough to resemble what this orientation would be when, the, when it's in the water. So you can see we guess pretty close. I mean, it's almost right on. If you look down the rounded part of the 360 imaging transducer, it's right in line with the boat. And also, you'll notice now when you steer that motor, we're at least an inch clearance between the bottom of the transducer and the top of the prop. So you can still steer that motor all the way around and not have to worry about the prop damaging the transducer. So now that that's all good and we're happy with that, we're going to go ahead, go ahead and tighten all the bolts that we just uh, finger tightened before. Now that we have the pod or the, the 360 transducer mounted on the, on the trolling motor, there's a collar and a little rubber bumper. And what that does is this bumper goes into the flat spot of the shaft of the trolling motor and we just sandwich that with these two collars, sandwich them together around the shaft. There's a reason for this, and what this does is it prevents the user from uh, raising his trolling motor up. If you would raise the trolling motor up without raising your 360 imaging unit up, you're gonna damage it when you turn the trolling motor and the prop hits the lower unit. So 
Um, we'll put this on. That'll prevent the user from raising this up. Uh, if you ever, let's say you're going to go slop fishing in a fish yellow water for bass, you're going to have to remove these two or at least loosen up these two Allen screws and raise everything up, uh, keeping in mind the orientation of the pod as well as the height, making sure it's one inch above the top of the propeller. So with that, we're going to mount this collar on the shaft. We have a couple of, uh, again, Allen heads and uh, and the kit comes with a little tube of anti-seize. We're just going to put a couple drops on that bolt. Uh, we don't want that to seize up or gall up, which we've talked about a couple times already. So that's about all you need on each one. Now that we have everything started, we have a rubber bumper in place. We got both halves of the collar assembled and we got our, our, uh, our bolts through. Uh, you'll notice one side of the bolt is, is slotted to receive the nut and the other side is smooth, and then if you look on the other side of it, it's, it's opposite. So one side is smooth, the other side uh, will receive that nut to keep it from spinning as you're tightening it. And again, hand tighten only. Don't use an impact or any kind of power drill to do this. Okay, so we can double check our work. We, got, we have this snugged up. We have all these bolts snugged up. We have our distance between the top of the prop and the bottom of the pot is good. And our orientation is uh, in our direction of travel with the boat. So uh, everything checks out good here. We're going to talk a little bit right now about cable management. And yeah, this particular motor, we have uh, an ethernet cord. We have a universal sonar cord. We have another ethernet cord for the 360 imaging and a power cord for the 360 imaging. So in this motor, we have four cables we need to deal with. Um, that doesn't include uh, adding additional things such as an external down imaging transducer or a hydro wave. Um, if we did choose to do that installation on this motor, we'd have two more cables to deal with. But for this one, um, basically it's just zip ties and uh, uh, we'll do some uh, electrical tape. Um, on an external mount, uh, and we're not doing it here, but I just want to mention it. If we were to put an external transducer uh, strap to the bottom of this lower unit, I usually run it up the flat shaft part and then zip tie it. And the other thing I like to do after it's zip tied is just want, run a roll or two of uh, black electrical tape. And, and the reason being is when you cut these zip ties off, and you can cut them off as close as you want, as close as you think you can get them, there's still a very sh small but sharp edge on that. And I've just heard some stories of guys uh, getting line caught on that. And it also protects your fingers from uh, nicks and cuts as well. So um, we're not doing that part on here because we don't have the external transducer. So we're just going to go ahead and tie this up nice and neat. So right now, let's just say I would zip tie that all our cords the way it is right now. You'll notice this coil cord, part of the trolling motor. The reason that's a coil cord is it stretches and you're able to raise your trolling motor. If you're again in shallower water, you can raise it out of the water. If I were to zip tie that right there, we don't have any slack to raise our motor. So just thinking ahead, we're gonna give a little slack here. You know, this much will allow the user to raise this about six inches. And then we're also gonna give a little slack here on that 360 unit uh, should he decide to raise that at a later date. By putting the foot pedal in this recessed pocket, the base where the cord comes out is right in the area where we ultimately need to run our two ethernet cords, our power cord, and our US sonar cord. So because of that, I'm just gonna neatly tie all our cords to this trolling motor cable cord and then we'll be able to shoot right down into this uh, into this uh, cabinet here and it'll all be concealed and you can tuck it away nice and neat. 360 installation complete.